We start with a look at the rainy forecast. Spotty storms are bringing downpours to parts of the area, especially right here in North Knoxville. Most of the area is under a flash flood watch through tomorrow morning. You're taking a live look right now at North Knoxville and Alcoa Highway, and it says it all. And as we bring in Chief Meteorologist Todd Howell, Todd, we are talking about yeah. customers without power at KUB. Uh, 3,500 of their 200,000 customers are without power, so a consequence of all this heavy rain. Yes, yeah, some stronger thunderstorms, some gusty winds, frequent and dangerous lightning, certainly move indoors when thunder roars, tropical downpours of rain, the main concern, possible flash flooding. We have a flash flood watch in place through 8 a.m. Tuesday. That has been extended from earlier today. Heavy rain and thunderstorms right now in Knoxville. We'll be right back to a radar update in just a moment. I want to show you a live radar or excuse me, sky cam update from Alcoa Highway. This kind of tells the story a little bit of some gusty winds, but tropical downpours of rain. Look at that. You can see the windswept rains coming into Blount County, Alcoa, Maryville. We're looking north on Alcoa Highway toward Knoxville. And yeah, we have seen this very heavy rainfall. We have had over two inches of rain, 2.12 inches so far today here at Channel 10 in North Knoxville. Again, slow moving, heavy thunderstorms. So you certainly got to take it easy on the roads. You can see the wind blowing it in right now, right? And uh, seeing some of those gusty winds. This is a live look in Alcoa Highway. This is our airport cam. Wow, that's just getting covered up as we look at it. We're going to go to a radar update uh, coming up right now in a second. But that is what's happening right now in Knoxville. Again, those stronger storms, torrential downpours. And you certainly, if you're going to be driving, number one, head beams on while raining in East Tennessee, it's the law. But also just slow down, take it easy and watch for ponding of water, watch for flooding, avoid flooded roadways. Flash flooding is going to be a concern as we head into this evening. Temperatures dropping now, it was in the mid 80s. Look at those winds at the airport right now, south southwest at 28 miles per hour. So we are seeing some stronger wind gusts. So far today, the stronger thunderstorms, heaviest rains have been focused across the northern half of East Tennessee, but right now the I-40 corridor, we're seeing what we call a little bit of training, slow moving thunderstorms, thunderstorms dropping the very heavy downpours of rain and repeatedly moving over the same Areas. We call that training moving from west to east. And so you can kind of see over the last two hours, right across Interstate 40, uh, from Farragut and Carnes near 40 and just north of there, Knoxville, Strawberry Plains, repeatedly moving over these same areas. We have a brand new flood advisory, including Knox and Anderson counties till 745, Morgan and Central Scott till 630. This is due to the heavy ongoing rain. And I've drawn two bars here and focused from west to east. This is the train unit I'm seeing. Crossville, Fairfield Glade, Rockwood, Harriman, Kingston, Oak Ridge, Clinton, Carnes, Farragut, Knoxville, Strawberry Plains. Again, repeatedly moving in the same areas over a period of time. We're going to see these showers and storms through this evening. Look at that heavy rainfall through much of tonight. We'll finally see a, a final wave of showers early in the morning and then drier conditions moving in for your Tuesday with lower humidity. I'll be back with that improving forecast. Oh, by the way, welcome back, Robin. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and what a way to be welcomed with yeah. lots of rain, Todd. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you. Other Monday headlines, a deputy from McCrary County, Kentucky is home recovering after he was shot last week in the line of duty. 28 year old Tyler Watkins has served just six months with the sheriff's <laughs> office there. Troopers say he was doing a welfare check when a suspect shot him last Tuesday night. The Watkins family says the deputy was shot in the abdomen and the chest. He was wearing his bulletproof vest. Family members say he did have two surgeries at UT Medical Center. But there's also a a thought in everybody's mind that says it won't happen to us, you know. I think that that it, you just don't you don't actually think it happens to you until it does happen to you. Family members also say that injured deputy hopes to be back on duty in just six weeks. The suspect faces an attempted murder charge and is expected to be in court this week. Coming up tonight at six, we'll hear how the family heard about the shooting first on a police scanner. A proposed $100 million development in Campbell County is again gaining steam. The conference center and water park would be at North Dam State Park. The idea first came about in 2018. Leaders say it would bring in revenue through tourism, but longtime state park advocates are against that project. 10 News reporter Sean Franklin has the status of the project now. City officials here in Rocky Top are hopeful when it comes to the development project. They say the more people that come here, the more money the city can make. We feel like growth potential is there. Norris Dam State Park already serves thousands of people each year. Not only do we want to attract visitors, but we want to maintain quality in the experience. Campbell County Mayor E.L. Morton hopes to add to that experience 
He's one of many government officials in Campbell and Anderson counties in favor of creating a conference center and water park in the state park. It would span nearly 200 acres on TVA-owned land. That $100 million for the project would come from an investor who already owns marinas in the area. So we always are looking and trying to encourage business growth here. Rocky Top City Manager Michael Foster says it would help his city's economy and the surrounding area. I understand sales tax is a huge part of what we do um, as, a, as a city and what services we can provide to our community. But the land is state-owned, and that's a problem for Billy Mincer with Friends of Norris Dam State Park. They're trying to commandeer the public land that was passed down from generation to generation. TVA says it only allows limited commercial development and said in a statement to 10 News, larger scale development, including golf courses and individually owned rental units, are not allowed. And Tennessee State Park says there are no plans to expand its current development of Norris Dam State Park. Morton and Mincer both say they're meeting with TDEC Tuesday to discuss the next step of the project. The leadership in, in Anderson and Campbell County, I don't know them. I respect them for their leadership, but this is, they're betraying the trust of the people. Campbell County Mayor E.O. Morton says that they hope to have time to present the project to the governor in mid-August. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Sean. A proposed development could bring food trucks and a tap room to Farragut. Developers say they'd like to build what they're calling Admiral's Landing at the corner of Campbell Station and Kingston Pike at the old Phillips 66 gas station. They outlined their plans before the Farragut Municipal Planning Commission last week. The 9,000 square foot space would include a tap room and space for rotating food trucks inside. It would also feature outdoor patios. The town of Farragut says the plan is in the early stages. State House Speaker Glenn Cassida is denying allegations that his office made promises in exchange for votes for the educational savings account bill. The speaker says he did not promise infrastructure projects in certain districts in exchange for votes on that voucher bill. Another allegation surfaced claiming the speaker promised a legislator a position in the Tennessee National Guard. Casta also denies that claim. He'll resign August 2nd following a vote of no confidence. Governor Lee called for a special session to select his replacement coming up on August 23rd. Congress is about to hear from the man who led an almost two year investigation into election meddling by Russia. Former special counsel Robert Mueller is set to testify publicly this week. NBC's Craig Boswell has reaction from lawmakers and the president. We could. President Trump today on the highly anticipated testimony from former special counsel Robert Mueller. No, I'm not going to be watching. Probably, maybe I'll see a little bit of it. The president attacking Democrats for bringing Mueller to the Hill. All they care about is a phony investigation. Mueller would be questioned for the first time Wednesday since releasing his report on Russian interference in the 2016 election. And there is an awful lot of material within the report that the American people are not familiar with, which they really need to be. Democrats want to ask Mueller whether the president obstructed justice, but know from the former special counsel's statement in May he's a reluctant witness. I do not believe it is appropriate for me to speak further about the investigation or to comment on the actions of the Justice Department or Congress. Republicans consider the Russia report one-sided and are equally anxious to question Mueller. The president's feud with four congresswomen of color entering its second week today, calling the lawmakers known as the squad a racist group of troublemakers. Yeah, I'm not going nowhere. Representative Rashida Tlaib pushed back against the president. You are all the squad. Trust me, if you for support equity, you support justice, you are one of us. Attacks on the lawmakers and Mueller's testimony, topics both sides hope will help win them voters in the 2020 election cycle. That was Craig Boswell reporting again on the Mueller hearing. Both Democrats and Republicans do agree it could be a make or break moment and shift public opinion. We're going to take you back outside and check traffic. Ed, no doubt this rain's having an impact. Oh, it has slowed everything down. We got a mess on Alcoa Highway. We've had this for almost an hour. Southbound Alcoa Highway down near the Marine Center. Still got a lane block there, so traffic is backed up. Actually, tell you the truth, it's backed up all the way to the interstate, but certainly across the Buck Carnes Bridge and uh, into downtown there as you come 40 eastbound and westbound trying 
the Gulf on Alcoa Highway, you're going to get into quite a delay. Also got a couple of other wrecks, 140 east at 275. They just wrapped that one up. And then we've got a one on Washington Pike at North Mall Road. That's just off 640 there in front of Coles. And another wreck at Middlebrook Pike at Ball Camp Road. But as John mentioned, things are very, very slow just about everywhere this afternoon. Your drive times, if you're checking out Alcoa Highway, you're looking at about 30 to 35 minutes from downtown to the airport. So you may want to check your flights and, and make sure you can get there on time. You can go 40 westbound and grab Pellissippi Parkway. That's okay, but really not going to save you a whole lot of time at this particular point. Of course, if they close it down anymore, we'll keep an eye on that for you. But right now, Alcoa Highway at the Marine Center is our trouble spot. We will keep you updated in the 10 News Traffic Center. Welcome back, Robin. We tried to keep the ratings up with tawdry <laughs> journalism and car wash coupons, but I don't know how we did. <laughs> Ed, thank you. Missed you lots. Well, to other headlines now, the Carson Newman University community says it is mourning after the death of an incoming freshman. Seth Washman died Friday while vacation after a study abroad trip in Guatemala. He was killed by an electrical short while swimming in a hotel pool. Seth's sister Emma was also hurt. She is a rising junior at Carson Newman. We draw strength from our, our faith in Christ and our very strong sense of uh, community that uh, wherever we are, uh, especially in hurting, uh, we are together and uh, that's where we draw that from. School leaders say Emma is now back recovering here in East Tennessee. Seth's body is scheduled to arrive home sometime this week. Funeral arrangements will follow. A burglary suspect in Hawkins County is accused of discovering a body and failing to tell authorities. The sheriff's office says deputies responded to a home in Church Hill Friday after receiving a call about a suspicious vehicle. Now, deputies found 43 year old Robert Stein inside hiding with a man who was dead. Deputies believe the body had been there for a while and they don't suspect a crime in that death. Stein is charged with four counts of aggravated burglary, two counts of theft of property and failure to report a dead body. Teachers at Fulton High School are thanking the community for pitching in after vandalism at the community garden. The teacher in charge of the garden says when she showed up on Sunday, several of the flowers were dug up and left in a pile. So she posted to Facebook and several community members showed up to help with the replanting. For the most part, all the perennials are back in the ground. Some were trimmed. Uh, thank goodness for this cooler weather. So I really think everything is going to survive. It just I just still don't understand why somebody just dug them up. The community garden is run by students and teachers at Fulton High. Students also get to take home the several different types of produce grown in that garden. In Anderson County, thousands of dollars worth of donated landscaping supplies were stolen from Claxton Elementary School over the weekend. Anderson County Schools says the supplies were part of a campus revitalization project. The school says it does have surveillance video of the burglary and the sheriff's office is aware.